In this video, we will take a look at this concept of the expected value and variance of a discrete random variable. And we will do so using a simple solved example which has been taken from an old sample paper from CARP. This video will be helpful for candidates who are preparing for the FRM part 1 exam. Okay? Now, what we will do is that we will solve this question using two different methods and in doing so, we will touch upon a few learning objectives which have been listed in the description of this video. Okay, so let's begin. In this question, it's given that there is this company ABC Corp and its shares are currently trading at this price of 100. It's given that over any one month period, the share price can go up by 10 USD with this probability of 30% or come down by 10 USD with this probability of 70%. Okay. It's given that changes in the share price over successive periods, over successive months, these changes are independent of each other. If you were to take this information and build for yourself a tree that kind of shows how the share price evolves over time, then your tree would look something like this. Okay, this tree has been drawn for this total period of two months. What this tree shows you is that at the end of two months, my share price of ABC Corp can take one of three possible values. If I were to position myself at this point in time, at this node of this tree, then the share price at the end of two months is not known to me and hence should be modeled as a random variable. Okay, let's use this notation of denoting this share price as S with two months in the subscript. Okay, now this random variable is a discrete random variable. The values which it is allowed to take, in this case these three values, they are specific, they are separate and they have gaps between them. Okay, this is a discrete random variable. The task at hand is to find the mean or let's say the expected value of this random variable and also the standard deviation. The standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance of this guy. Okay? The first way to calculate these numbers is to use the standard formulas for each one of them. And this is indeed the way the method which the solution in the GARP sample paper also makes use of. Okay? Now, understand this that for any random variable, let's call it capital X, its expected value, read as expected value of X, can be written simply to be equal to the probability weighted average of all possible values which this capital X is allowed to take. Okay, if I were to use this formula to calculate the expected value of this guy, First things first, I will need the probability of this guy taking on each of these three possible values. Okay, and this is what we have done here. The probability of S2M, our random variable, taking on this value 120 is simply equal to 0.3 times 0.3. Okay, for my S2M to land up here, I need to have an increase in the first month followed by again an increase in the second month. So 30% times 30%, that gives me 9%. Similarly, the probability of S2M landing here, that means taking on this value 80, will be equal to 0.7 times 0.7, that's 0.49. The probabilities of S2M taking on these three values the sum of these three probabilities should be equal to 1. Therefore, the probability of S2M landing here should be equal to 1 minus 0 0.09 minus 0 0.49. That should give you 0 0.42 for this probability. 
Alternatively, you can calculate the probability of S2M taking on the value 100 to be equal to the probability of taking this path, that's 0.3 times 0.7, plus the probability of taking this path, which is 0.7 times 0.3. And that again gives you 0.42. Okay, now that we have the probabilities of each of these nodes, let's very quickly do this. Let's find the probability weighted average of these three prices. And this gives us 92 as the expected value of S2M. Okay, now before I move ahead, let me very quickly tell you how to interpret this number, how to interpret this result that the expected value of S2M is 92. For this purpose, what we will need is an experiment whose any given trial gives us a simulated value of S2M. Okay, for this purpose, what we will need is an unfair coin whose probability of landing up with the heads is 30% and whose probability of landing up with the tails is 70%. We will toss this unfair coin twice. The first toss will tell us what happens in the first month. The second toss will tell us what happens in the second month. For any toss, heads would mean that the share price goes up by 10 USD. Tails would mean that the share price goes down by 10 USD. If you toss this unfair coin twice, it will tell you which of these three nodes you will arrive at eventually after the two tosses. Okay, and this experiment therefore helps you simulate various values of S2M. Okay, if you were to run this experiment many, many times and at the end of every trial, note the value of S2M that has been simulated and in the end, take a simple average of all those simulated values of S2M, it will turn out to be very close to this number which is 92. Okay, this is how you interpret this number. Okay, now let's move on to the variance of this S2M. Let's start by very quickly writing down the formula for variance for in general, let's say, a random variable capital X. The formula would look something like this. Variance of capital X is equal to, again, a probability weighted average, but this time it's the probability weighted average of the deviation of any possible value which capital X is allowed to take from the mean or expected value and this deviation squared. Okay, so variance of capital X is the probability weighted average of the squared deviation of each individual or possible value of capital X from its mean or expected value. Okay, to interpret this number, which is the variance of capital X, think of it to be the measure of how spread out the possible values of capital X are from its mean or expected value. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's apply this formula for the case of S2M and this is what we've done here. Variance of S2M would simply be equal to 0 0.09 times the deviation of this guy from 92, which is 28 squared plus 0 0.42 times the deviation of this guy from 92, which is 8 squared plus 0.49 times the deviation of this guy from 92, which is minus 12 squared and this comes out to be 168. Standard deviation of S2M is nothing but the square root of this guy 12.96. This tells us that the correct answer is D. Okay now let's move on to method 2. In method 2 what we will do is that we will treat our random variable S2M to be equal to the value that we start with, that's 100, plus the random change that happens over the first month, let's call it a random variable Z1, plus 
the random change which happens in the second month. Let's call it the random variable Z2. And this is how it'll look like. S2M is equal to 100 plus Z1 plus Z2. Z1 and Z2, please note, these are two random variables which have the same distribution. Both of these random variables, they can take one of two possible values. Plus 10 with the probability of 0.3, minus 10 with the probability of 0.7. Okay? Before I move ahead, I can do this. I can quickly calculate the expected value of each of these z's and also the variance of each of these z's and using formulas which we've already seen on the previous page. So the expected value of each of these z's is simply probability weighted average of these two values. So 10 times 0.3 plus minus 10 times 0.7. This gives me minus 4. Okay, this is my expected value or mean of each of these z's. The variance of each of these z's would simply be the probability weighted average of the squared deviations from the mean. That will be simply 0.3 times 10 minus minus 4, that's 14 squared, plus 0.7 times minus 10 minus minus 4, that's minus 6 squared. That gives me 84 as the answer. Okay, quickly note this that both Z1 and Z2, they have the same distribution. That means they are identically distributed. And it's given that changes in successive months, they are independent of each other. So Z1 and Z2 are independent of each other. This tells me that Z1 and Z2 are IID, independent and identically distributed. Okay. Now what we will do is that we will quickly work out the expected value of this guy and variance of this guy using the mean and the variances of each of the z's, right? The expected value of this guy would simply be equal to the expected value of this guy, which is a constant and that will be equal to 100, plus the expected value of this guy, which is minus 4, plus the expected value of this guy, which is again minus 4. And this is what you will get. Okay, the expected value of S2M is simply 100 plus minus 4 plus minus 4, that's 92. Same answer as method 1. For the variance of this guy, this 100, which is an additive constant, will not contribute. The variance of this guy, in a very general sense, should be equal to the variance of this guy, plus the variance of this guy, plus two times the covariance of this guy and this guy. But since Z1 and Z2 are independent of each other, the covariance turns out to be zero. Therefore, the variance of S2M is equal to variance of Z1 plus variance of Z2. And this is what you will get. Variance of S2M is 168. Again, the same answer which we had on the previous page. Right? Taking a square root gives us the standard deviation to be 12.96. Okay? Essentially, in method 2, what we've done is that we have made use of the properties and the formulas for the expected value and the variance for the sum of IID random variables. Okay? This video was all about understanding this concept of expected value and also variance of a discrete random variable.